What's up guys, it's Friday and so you know what time it is. It's time for What The Fitness. But first, make sure you like, subscribe, comment for algorithm. This week, we have some clips from the podcast Diary of a CEO. I had a bunch of people send this to me. This is with Dr. Tim Spector, I think his name is. And this video proves that you can be a very smart person and suffer from severe cognitive dissonance. Let's see, shall we? Exercise doesn't help weight loss. No. The reason exercise doesn't work is because Professor Tim Spector. He's an award-winning scientist, best-selling author and medical professor. And he is ranked in the top 100 of the world's most cited scientists. Then we talk about the future of personalized nutrition. Many consider you to be the leading expert on gut health and diet. No, he's not. What's your view on the ketogenic diet? Virtually impossible. What about vitamins? Waste of money. What are the facts around fasting? Oh dear. Oh shit, what do you mean, oh dear? The food industry wants you to focus on calorie, fat content, sugar, so you don't have to think about the quality of the food. There's never been any long-term study showing that calorie counting is an effective way to <laughs> maintain weight loss. This is why I want people to think about food very differently than we have done in the past. So what is the cost? Depression and anxiety is intricately linked to the quality of your gut microbes. So these are microscopic bugs in our intestines. All of them are able to pump out chemicals that are what chemicals, vital for Tim? our body when they're fed the right foods. The reason we're in this state is we've killed off a lot of our good bugs. I think people don't think of all the positive benefits that don't think that you need to build them up. God, it's so confusing. You know, when you walk down the aisle in the supermarket, everything is trying to pretend that it's good. So how do I know what is good? You have to... There's a lot of bull in that. First one being the idea that calorie counting has not led to long-term weight loss. There are zero dietary interventions that have actually led to long-term weight loss if you want to use the metrics that you're applying to calorie counting to everything else. Yeah, the ketogenic diet, plant-based diet, whatever. None of them have a good track record. In fact, in a recent meta-analysis of 14 named diets where they ran the gamut from like low carb, high fat to high carb, low fat, and everything in between, they basically showed that over the long term, there was no difference in sustained fat loss because all people by the end had poor adherence. But if they stratified things into adherence level, regardless of diet type, they saw that as adherence went up to whatever diet, the amount of fat you lose and kept off went up. So does calorie counting work? Of course it does if you consume less calories than you burn. Now, is calorie counting the right tool for you as an individual? Possibly not, but he is conflating a tool with an outcome. Just keeping a budget does not ensure that you'll become wealthy, but it can be a valuable tool for many people. But if you aren't making enough money or you're spending too much money, it doesn't matter if you're budgeting or not. The important thing about a budget is often by keeping a budget, it changes the way you behave, just like calorie counting. If you count calories, many times it will change the way you behave. Now let's go into his stuff on gut microbes. There's a major problem with what he's saying. That problem is that in the human randomized control trials where they have people do any kind of diet that puts people into a calorie deficit, people lose weight. So why don't they keep it off? Oh, because they stopped doing the thing that helped them lose weight. They don't make it a lifestyle. Again, I'm not saying that you should be counting calories. What you as an individual should do is find the form of dietary restriction that feels the least restrictive to you. And as far as the title of the thing, which was exercise doesn't help us lose weight, if only we had human random, oh wait, we have human randomized control trials that show conclusively that exercise can cause weight loss. I just don't know how much data we have to show these people before they'll change their mind, but they probably won't. Tim has written a bunch of diet books. He is financially invested in this and he's invested in this story that's all about finding the right foods for our gut microbiome. Now, am I saying the gut microbiome plays no role in weight loss or weight gain? Of course not. It may have a role, but it still involves energy balance. If your gut microbiome is doing something to affect fat loss or fat gain, it's doing so by either making the calories you eat 
more available for your body, so increasing the amount of metabolizable energy you get, which increases your calories in, or it is through some sort of reduction in energy expenditure through killing off your gut microbes, as he says. Well, here's the problem with that. Overweight and obese people do not have decreased energy expenditure compared to lean people. In fact, they have greater energy expenditure. Now, when you normalize for their lean mass, they have the same energy expenditure as lean people, but it's not different. So we can take that part out of it. It doesn't appear to be the energy expenditure. So what about making calories more available for the body, increasing your metabolizable energy? Well, there's not a whole lot of good data to support that either. And even if so, the amount of calories we lose through our fecal matter, which is non-metabolizable energy, is like five to 10%. It's very, very small. Now, if you eat more fiber, that amount goes up. Now, if he's gonna say, hey, you should eat more fibrous carbohydrate because fiber increases the amount of good gut bacteria, then I'm not gonna argue. I think that's a great idea. And fiber can be a great tool for weight loss because of its effects on satiety. But we haven't really seen increased fiber lead to increased energy expenditure. So, Tim, through what mechanism is what you claim occurring? How are these so-called right foods somehow either increasing energy expenditure, which we haven't seen, or decreasing the amount of metabolizable energy that you have? This just shows that you can have a ton of evidence and you can have somebody who, through their own wish for something to be true, have severe cognitive dissonance. You only need to look through the laundry list of Nobel Prize winners who believed in absolute quackery by the end of their lives. This isn't just like senility. This is like a few Nobel Prize people have legit said insane things right after winning the Nobel Prize. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that smart people are not less prone to cognitive dissonance. They're actually more prone to cognitive dissonance because they use their own intelligence to justify their beliefs. Well, I wouldn't believe in something that's insane. Of course you would, because you're a tribal, stupid human like the rest of us. I have believed in BS. Now, fortunately, I am very willing to change my views on things as new data comes out. And I have done this. You guys have seen this. If you've followed me for over five years, you've seen it. But people like this, when you tie your identity to a narrative, they're probably not gonna change their views. And I'd be happy to debate Tim on this anytime he wants. And I will link the human randomized control trials in the description. Also, Weight Watchers isn't calorie counting, but it's kind of the same thing. And actually Weight Watchers, if you look at the randomized control trial data, has some of the best outcomes in terms of long-term weight loss with all these different dietary approaches. So I would like to know how Tim explains that. Anyways, hope you guys have a great week. I'll catch you next week.